Hey everyone, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate demo for the piece I call Minji. So this is another character in this just three part thing that I did where I did these uh, three characters with pink backgrounds. Um, the last one was called Layla, uh, this one is named Minji, and there's one more to get to uh, which I'll get to in a couple more videos. Um, I'm just going to let the time lapse play at the time, the amount of time it normally does with the speed it normally does because I reuse a lot of techniques here and I think that this is more just talking about general design. Uh, you could see there a minute ago that I had done more of like a symmetrical straight on thing and I just decided that uh, even though that's fun to do, I didn't really like it for this set. I wanted them, I wanted all the characters to just not be straight on, not get kind of like flattened out a little bit in that way. So. Um, you can see here where I pivot to more of this pose and I start working it and this is ultimately the pose uh, that we end up going with. Uh, there for a second, by the way, I shrunk it so that I could just work out her overall anatomy, like the parts that are going off the page, just so I could make sure some of my proportions were okay and that the body posture was right and then blew it back up again so that I could uh, finish it at you know the size that it was going to be. For each one of these, I wanted the tattoo styles to be slightly different. Um, you can see here we're going for a very different look than the last character. You can also see for a second I play with different colors because after I did the first character, I didn't know that I was going to go with kind of the same lighting and the same background. I was just I was just messing around. Um, it's that thing where like the first one is just a one-off, the second one is like, oh, that's kind of a fun pair, and then when you got three, you've got kind of like a series that's got rules now it's not just about these one-off decisions they all kind of start sharing similar qualities and you maintain some amount of consistency so since this was only the second one it was like oh well what if I do this kind of a background and then once it was decided that it's all the same it's like oh well now the third one will definitely have the same thing as the first two so if you watched the previous uh, video in the series the Layla character um, this one is going to be constructed uh, identically. We are starting with the flats right here. Um, the colors that we're using is trying to keep in line with this sort of synth wavy kind of like neon vibe where nothing is the actual color that it would be. You'll see some of those colors actually shift around a little bit more just as I'm trying to find the vibe of this one. But we end up coming back to something that's very close to what you see right here. And at this point, some aspects of this are starting to become finalized, like clean flats, but others aren't. So like the tattoos are not what we have in the final version, the hair is not what we have in the final version, and all of that is going to get uh, further tweaked. In fact, in a minute, she's about to lose a few inches off the bottom of that hair. Similarly to the Layla, pit, uh, the Layla piece, I believe I mentioned the idea of using reference and so with this it was looking at a lot of sort of trendy haircuts and trying to figure out where I wanted this character to land um, so I played with a bunch of different things and then we end up with uh, what you're gonna see here in a second so this is the same construction as the other piece we're doing all of our flats right now and then we're gonna go in with a few layers of shadows and then a few layers of lighting um, this is, of course, to try and get around sort of uh, the limitations of Procreate's layer system as well as my own process and just try to come up with something that works for me. As you're watching this video, um, there might be some things that you're like, oh wow, I never thought of that. Or you might be things that like, oh, that could be done way smarter. And that's kind of the point of these videos is to just get it out on Front Street how this kind of a thing is made and then you can take some of those techniques and develop them differently or ignore them or whatever there's no right way 100% right way to get to the end result so what you're gonna see here is I'm finalizing flats and then I start moving into my sort of like ambient occlusion layer which is a purpley blue color um, that's in the sort of like pale upper left corner and then it is set to multiply and it is on a layer above the folder that has all these flats in it. Uh, the fact that you're seeing her chest, her like sort of side, her distant arm, her neck, why those are all kind of a different color is because I've slightly lowered the opacity on those so that I can differentiate between the parts of her skin that are on that layer 
that's further back than the other layer. So I want to be able to see exactly where that stops and starts. And then as we go through, um, we'll eventually do some of the select paint, select clear method, which is my way for keeping everything straight. Uh, in, as far as the layer on top, applying shadows to all of the layers underneath, um, which there's a video link down below if you want to see exactly how I move through that flow. So what we're going to do is this process right here, where we're trying to capture the sort of like recessed parts of her form and where shadow would collect because um, light isn't really getting in there. Um, we're going to be moving through the entire uh, form and hitting all of those before we move into the next shadow type. And just as a reminder, what we're doing here is we're using the turpentine brush that's from my free brush set, which is in the description down below. And we're using that new turpentine brush to paint. And then we're using that new turpentine brush to also smear this around so that we can get our soft parts, our rounded parts, as well as our hard cuts, our hard lines in here. Okay, and now we are shifting to the different shadow type. We're not going to do any kind of smearing here. Uh, we're just going to be laying in the hard cast shadows. We're using the same color that we use for the AO shadow pass. Uh, but now we are just doing the areas where like say the arm is casting shadow onto like her chest and like her armpit there or her uh, jawline and her chin casting onto her neck, the hair onto her face, etc, etc. Trying to maintain the light source that we've kind of got set up in our minds that we're trying to model in 2D. So the the big thing that I want to highlight here as you're watching this process too is that I've been working in this particular version of this process for a bit now. Um, a few years ago I just did a piece where I was kind of trying to figure out a way that I could get a little bit more optimal with things and get a little looser with things um, because I was uh, maybe just a little too tight and like trying to get perfect gradients and perfect this and all that kind of stuff and so I wanted to work just like slightly messier but then still be able to bring in some amount of I don't know like polish when I need to um, but then also come to grips with like the procreate layer limits so this is the way that I ended up developing, or I should say this is a method that I ended up developing for that, but it's not the only tools that I use, and it shouldn't be the only tools that you use either. Um, part of what I do when I'm in the middle of doing a piece like this is I actually do use some other techniques that aren't explicitly called out because they're just in the bag of tricks, and um, that's why it's important to try lots of different methods and techniques and... Um, see what works for you but then also say like oh i could see this this doesn't work right now but it could work in this setting or whatever that is um, because then it allows you to just be more versatile and handle different problems so the stage that we're at now you could see before that i did a lot of this shading without the tattoo layer on because the tattoo layer is actually irrelevant to the shading um, since that is just on the topology of the character, we need to capture all those forms nice and clearly before the tattoos go on. So now that we're putting the tattoos on, um, as I mentioned in the Layla video and other videos where I handle tattoos, the tattoos exist in a layer that's not unlike the way that they are in real life, where shadow will cause the shadow to hit it and it'll go dark and all that, but then the highlight kind of sits a little bit more on top. It doesn't really get like absorbed so when you have that part of that tattoo that's getting darker 
um, just like a real surface that's darker, like look at something like a bowling ball, you're going to see that highlight much more prominently. So the way that I end up doing the lighting here is the shadows are on the multiply, but then the highlights are actually just really low opacity bright colors as opposed to using like an overlay or something like that because I don't want the colors to I don't want the color that I'm using to absorb anything underneath I want it to be slightly reflectant on top but we're not building something that's actually chrome here so we have to temper that so you're kind of like balancing the visibility of that shine uh, with the softness and shape of those sign uh, those shines in order to communicate the form accurately if you do all of that right, in theory, you can have whatever tattoo designs you want, as long as you're kind of like warping them to the form, and your lighting should work. Um, and then that these tattoos then are a part of the flat layer system. You can see right there I'm putting that shine on her shoulder, that's a perfect example. Um, it looks good with her sort of like bluish synth wavy skin, and then once you flip the tattoo on, that's the way that shine would be because that shine is happening to the skin and then the tattoo is underneath the those layers of skin. Um, I also will sometimes, well I will, sorry, I will always actually um, slightly blur the tattoos because once a tattoo is healed right off the bat, it blurs a little bit and then over time blurs a bit more and depending on how good, uh, how well the tattoo was applied, it will, um, it'll look better or worse basically. Um, but they will all, of course, blur over time, no matter what. And so um, what I try to do is I try to capture the fact that tattoos are handmade. Tattoos are not made by a machine. And there's an aspect of them that is like deliberately imperfect. They're striving for perfection, just like any artist does. Um, but then there's like an aspect of it where like there's going to be these slight little errors here and there. And that's kind of what makes them like neat and authentic and unique. And so by adding little, a little blur in there, or if I'm doing designs, I might actually add like a little, not a mess up, but like a slightly imperfect line here or there. And that's just to try and make them feel a little bit more real. Since I generally operate in fairly stylized characters, I try to find things in like materials or lighting or something in there just to try and make it feel a little bit more organic, uh, something that you're used to seeing. And then that makes the character just kind of feel a little bit better overall. So at this point, we're actually coming into the home stretch. Everything that I did on the Layla piece, which is probably a little more thoroughly explained, is happening here as well. And then what ultimately ends up being the big change is just the color of the flats underneath that ends up giving like a dramatically different vibe than the other piece. Um, but they're all constructed the same. All the shadow layers are uh, set to like the same values and everything. And then you could then come in here and you could color shift these colors around and all of your layers are going to be reactive. So if you need to slightly tweak something or you decide that her hair should be darker or lighter or a different color entirely, something like that, um, you can do that and all of your lighting will be reactive. The only thing that won't be reactive is I'll do a pass where I go in and I color pick in order to apply bounce lighting. And that is the only area where I'm picking specific colors and putting specific colors in. So we're coming to the end here where everything's getting flipped on and uh, there might be some like little tweaks happening that are almost indiscernible, but there was a reason I did them at the time. I thought that since this is the second in the series, it made sense to just kind of let this one play out at regular speed um, so that we're not belaboring um, too much of the process. Like I said, you can pick all that up in the Layla piece. And here is the final version. This was a quick one overall. Um, a lot of this process was more deeply covered in the other video, um, so I'll let that sit there. And this was more just a general discussion of kind of how it came together. We've got one more in the series that'll pop up in a couple of videos, and uh, we'll wrap up how these were all created. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.